So you just learned in watching the last video the formula to find the area of a regular nonagon. It's actually one of two th different um, ways that you can write it. The first way we saw was that it's one half times the apothem, the length of the apothem, which is the segment drawn from the center to perpendicular to the side of the polygon. And then times n times s, which n always represents the number of polygon sides. and s is the length of each side, as we can see in the picture. But we also know that this n times s is the same thing as the perimeter of the actual polygon. So that's where this other formula comes from. Um, and if, you're, if you want to memorize the formula, which really you don't have to, because it, you could derive it from those triangles that are formed, um, it'd be better to do that 1 half a times p. Okay, so now let's look at an example applying this area of the polygon. So it says a regular nonagon is inscribed in a circle with a radius of four inches. Find the perimeter and area of the nonagon. So here I have my inscribed nonagon drawn, and my center is marked here, and I'm gonna write this as my four inches, okay? So that is the length of my radius. We have to find two things, the perimeter and the area of the nonagon. And actually, you need the perimeter in order to find the area anyway. So remember that the radius of the circle that it's inscribing that polygon is actually becomes, it, that divides these, the uh, polygon into n number of triangles, okay? So what that means is, let's say we have a point on the circle and we're creating a nonagon, which means that we have to rotate that point nine times, okay? What would happen is if we drew a point at each of those rotations and then join segments from the center to that point that was on the circle that we were rotating, you would get nine different radii, okay? That's called a radius from a segment from the center to a point on the circle. So you would end up, as in the, the previous video, you would see that you have nine triangles. So if you want to find the area of this whole regular nonagon, you can just find the area of nine triangles. So we could just do the area of nine of one half base times height. Now, within this base times height, the base of the triangle becomes the side length and the height of the triangle becomes the apothem. Excuse me, my phone's ringing. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's get back on track here. So we know that the base of the triangle is actually the length of the side of the polygon, and the height is actually the length of the apothem. So let's say I look at just one of these triangles, okay? So here's my triangle, and I'm going to actually bring it outside of the polygon so you can see. See, just like that. How nice is that? Okay. so. We know that the length, which is the, the length of the side of the triangle right here, is 4 because that is the length of the radius throughout the entire polygon, okay? We need to find A, which is the height, as well as the entire base of this triangle. But what we know here is that this altitude comes down and forms a right angle, right? So we get a right triangle. The altitude of an isosceles triangle also bisects the base of the triangle. So if I call this x, I could find that x using my right angles, or my right triangles, and then just double it and I would get the whole base of the triangle, okay? Now, how do we go about doing that if right now the only thing I know is that the radius is 4? Well, let's think back to what's happening in this circle, okay? W again, we're taking a point and we're rotating it nine times. We know that a circle is 360 degrees, and we're rotating it nine times. So that makes every measure of the central angle to be 40 degrees, meaning so every time we have a point and then we rotate it, we are moving 40 degrees along the circle. Okay? These are what we call the central angle. Central angles are formed by two radii at the center. Okay? So if I think back to my triangle here, I know that the angle, and actually this is getting messy, but right in there, this whole thing is going to be 40 degrees, which means that the altitude, we remember that the altitude is also an angle bisector. That would be 20 degrees. Okay? So now let me make this a little bit clearer. I'm writing a lot. So here's 4, here's x and a, and we know that this angle right here is 20 degrees. 
because the whole thing right here was 40, and we drop that apothem down, and we get 20. Okay, so now we could find A and we can find X. We could use our trig ratios for that. So let's first find X. So the sine of 20 is going to be equal to X over 40. Oh, I'm sorry, nope, just four. I don't know where I'm getting 40 from. Oh, geez, that was a big eraser. Okay, wait, so the sine of 20 equals X over four. Okay, so in our calculators, we're just gonna do four times the sine of 20. Four times the sine of 20, and that gets us, let's do two decimal places. X is approximately 1.37, okay? So if X is 1.37, what does that mean is the length of our base? Well, remember that each one of these we could call X. So if we do that times two, we should get 2.74, about. Okay, the next thing we have to do is find the length of our apothem. So here's our apothem, okay? So we, and we already know the four is the hypotenuse, so I'm gonna use the cosine. Cosine of 20 equals A over four. So we're gonna do four times the cosine of 20. That gets us 3.76. Okay, and that's the height of these triangles, 3.76. Okay, so now let's go back and let's just first find the area because I already have it set up here. So the area is going to be nine times and we're gonna do the base of the triangle which is 2.74 times the height which is the length of our apothem which is 3.76 and we're gonna divide that by two because that's just the area of a triangle is base times height over two. And we'll times that by nine. So let's plug all that in our calculator. And I get 46.36. And this is inches squared. Okay, that's our area. Now we were also asked to find the perimeter. Well, the perimeter is just going to be nine times the length of the side. And we know that the length of the side of the triangle, which is right here, which is the same as the polygon side, is 2.74. So nine times 2.74 gets me 24.66 approximately. And that's inches for the perimeter. Okay, so here's our area and there's our perimeter.